but with that, we will kick things off. So um, go ahead and advance for me. So uh, yeah, I am Matthew Palumbo. I'm the national sales manager for audio control. If you're not familiar with me, um, I've been in the industry about 20 years now uh, in 12 volt. I worked at a stereo shop for about half, uh, about 15 years, um, about half that time as an in installer or technician and the other half as a sales guy and store manager. I first got interested in car audio by uh, mini trucks and Lowrider magazine, which being a uh, chubby white kid in a little farming community was not a popular choice, I assure you, um, but uh, it got me where I am today. Um, some fun facts about me real quick. I bought a car when I was about 14 just to start installing car audio in. Um, it's kind of like Legos for me, and, and that's how I made a lot of my mistakes and caught things on fire and learned the hard way. Um, and last little thing about me is uh, I was a wedding DJ for about 10 years, so I uh, made a little bit of side money that way, and probably one of the ways I'm not afraid to do public speaking and training. So um, enough about me, though. We'll move on to a um, little bit about audio control. So audio control has been around since the 70s. We're just about to 50 year mark. Um, I can assure you we have some cool things planned for that 50 year mark, but audio control started out as a home and um, home audio manufacturer first and, you know, doing all the designing, engineering, testing in the U.S. And, um, you know, we started out, like I said, with home and then moved into mobile audio in the early 80s. And fun fact, if you didn't know, the Epicenter, one of our most legendary products, uh, was actually designed as a home audio product first, which is kind of cool. Um, it was made for those, uh, you know, big record players that maybe you're familiar with from your grandma and grandpa's living room, big wooden console. You know, they used to master the bass out of a lot of records because it would make the needle skip because the record player and the speakers and everything were all in one big cabinet. And so hi-fi enthusiasts, though, didn't have those. They had separate components with separate speakers and they wanted that bass. And that's where audio control came up with the epicenter. So just a fun little fact for you today. Um, we still do a lot of our design, engineering and testing in the U.S. Um, you know, we still have an office in uh, or some employees, I should say, in the Pacific Northwest, myself being one of them. I live about an hour and a half north of Seattle. And then our main um, centers of operation are out of Ontario, California and Clearwater, Florida. So still everything happening in the U.S. these days as far as uh, design, engineering, testing, all that good stuff. <clears throat> So, um, you know, I still think audio control has the industry's best warranty. We have a five-year warranty when installed by an authorized dealer and one year if it's sold over the counter. Um, that is on all electronics. So anything basically that takes power and ground is going to be covered by that five-year warranty. Uh, if it's a speaker or subwoofer, it's a two-year warranty when installed by a dealer or one year over the counter. And we're going to, of course, dive into speakers and subwoofers here momentarily. And, you know, one of the things that's come out of being acquired by Amp Global, now called Stinger, is support. I really feel that we have better support today than we've ever had. We've always had really good support. It's been one of Audio Control's, um, you know, biggest highlights, I would say, or things that everybody knows about Audio Control is that they have great support, and we still do. We even have more of it, though. Now, there's more tech support agents. We have longer tech support hours where we can uh, actually handle more calls. We even have some weekend support, which we've never had in the past. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, when we talk power, whether that's speakers, amplifiers, subwoofers, whatever it is, just keep in mind, it is real RMS power only. We do not do peak power. We don't do max. We don't do dynamic. We don't do any of those BS marketing numbers. If you hear me say a wattage rating, just keep in mind that is real RMS power. So let's move on to kind of the uh, thing a lot of you came to learn about, right? Audio control has wanted to do speakers and subwoofers for a very long time time and we are finally there. Um, I've been with audio control since 2019, so about five years now. And you know, from the day I started there, they were talking about, hey, we're looking at doing a full line and speakers and subs and all this stuff. But we really, over those four years or so um, before the acquisition, you know, we never really found the right partner to design them with. We knew we couldn't do all the design and, and assembly and the engineering and all that stuff in-house. We just didn't have the right people. And to be honest, we didn't really have all the resources available to do it either. We would have had to literally just gone to China and picked out some speakers and said, here, put our names on those. And that's not what we wanted to do. Um, and so with that, I like to address the elephant in the room, which is, hey, is this stuff off the shelf 
you know, stuff that you're going overseas and picking out and putting your name on? And the answer is no, we are actually designing and engineering these products here in the US. Um, I'm on that team that helped design these products. There's two other gentlemen that were the main, you know, kind of focused people on these projects. And one of them is another audio control employee. He's an industrial designer named Dan. He does all of our renderings. He does all the industrial design on the products that you already know and love, like an LC2i Pro, an Epicenter Micro, um, the amplifiers, all that stuff was designed by this guy. And that's the same guy who helped design all these speakers and subs. The other gentleman involved is a guy named Mark Chow. He started a company way back when called RE Audio. If you remember those big triple uh, X subwoofers from back in the day, things like that, that was his baby. And he's the one that does all of our acoustic de design, um, like the actual electrical engineering on these products. So um, it is definitely still an audio control product. It is not Phoenix Gold rebrand. That's another thing I hear a lot. Just to clear that up, we do still offer Phoenix Gold, just not in the US. Phoenix Gold has been pushed to be an international brand. And if you're wondering why, it's because it sells really, really well in the UK and overseas. But unfortunately, it doesn't do great in the US anymore. So Audio Control is now the power audio brand for Amp Global or Stinger Solutions, whatever you want to call us these days in the US and Phoenix Gold is that brand overseas. So let's dive right into the actual products themselves. So first on the list is the Space Series. Space Series is our thin line subwoofers. You can go ahead and advance the slide for me again. Um, the Space Series was designed to be exactly what you're thinking, a thin line or slim, shallow, whatever you want to call it, woofer line, but we wanted it to perform more like a standard depth woofer. You can go ahead and advance to the next. So with the uh, Space Series, these were uh, offered or are offered, I should say, in a 10 inch or 12 inch size. And you can see even just on this initial slide, the design and time that went into the um, overall physical design and the features of these products. You know, audio controls are really feature heavy and attention to detail company, um, attention to detail brand. And that's really where we wanted to position ourselves with these woofers and speakers as well. So as we go through this, you'll notice we didn't design a you know shallow line of woofers that has three different tiers within it and a standard depth line of woofers with five different tiers and a you know mids and highs speaker line that has a good, better, best, and then an esoteric above that. Like we just wanted to do exactly where we fit in the mix. And many of you that have ever done a training with me or came to the booth uh, at a trade show or whatever it is, have maybe heard me say before, you know, audio control to me uh, slots in really well at just about any store, because if you're a high end shop, I'm probably going to be one of your like entry level brands. If you're an everyday type shop, nothing wrong with that. I'm going to be one of your upper end lines at your store. And we fit that gap really, really well. There's not a lot of brands that do that. And that's exactly where we fit. And that's exactly where these products are targeted. So when we look at the Space Series woofers, you're going to see there are two sizes, 10 inch, 12 inch. They're all single voice coils. They all handle the same amount of power. They're all 600 watts RMS. So um, with this line of woofers, you know, there's a few important things to know. One is, why did we do single voice coils? Why? Well, to keep it simple. Again, audio control is all about features and details and all that, but we're also about keeping it simple. We don't do things just for the sake of doing them or because everyone else is doing it or for looks. We like to do things for a reason, right? And to me, when I look at our competitors and all the different subwoofers that are out there, let's face it. There are a million speakers and subwoofers out there in the market to choose from. So if we are going to come to the market as audio control and say, hey, we are going to offer a new line of speakers and subs, what is it that we're offering that you can't get elsewhere, right? Well, when we look at these, there's a couple of things. Simplicity is one of them. Single voice coils, right? When I look at the other offerings out there, I go, okay, if I'm carrying some of the big brands out there that exist in the world and they offer a single 10 inch woofer in their mid-grade line but they offer it in a single two ohm a single four ohm a dual two ohm a dual four ohm and a grill that's five SKUs that a dealer really needs to stock to carry what is essentially one woofer the space series come with the grill 
and they only come in single two or single four ohm impedances. Because if you know anything about this, you know that there's no benefit to a dual voice coil other than wiring uh, options and flexibility, right? There's no nothing that makes a dual voice coil better than a single voice coil. It's just a different option in how you're going to wire it. So to keep it simple and to keep inventory levels down and make it so that people don't have to invest as much time, money, and space in inventory, we went with single voice coils because you can still achieve that same final impedance at the amplifier a lot easier and it makes the wiring a lot more simple when we're just wiring up single coils. So <clears throat> one of the other things you'll notice though too is as we look through this, um, you know, power handling wise, 600 watts is a lot for a slim woofer. Um, you know, when you stack us up against some of the competition that's out there, we are going to come in as far as how these woofers perform, we're going to come in at about half the price, um, twice the power handling and in include a grill compared to a lot of the other competitors that are out there in a much higher price category. So um, you definitely have to see these, feel these and experience them, hear them to get the full picture, but this will at least give you an idea. So on that space series, um, again, you know, have those removable grills. One of the really cool things on these woofers, I've actually got a sample here. I'm going to lean over and pick up so I can show you guys a little bit as I'm going here. Um, as you can see, they are definitely slim. They are not a, you know, call it a slim, but it's actually pretty deep type woofer. Um, the frequency response on these is great. They are a really well-designed, well built woofer, and they sound a lot more like a standard depth subwoofer than what most companies offer in a shallow. You'll also notice that we've, we've really tried to think of everything when it comes to the installer. There is no um, venting on the back plate here. All the venting is radial around the outside. So this can go flat up against the back of an enclosure if it needs to. We've also done things like make sure that the taper on the basket of the woofer is done in such a way that it fits some of those um, prefabricated enclosures for under the back seats of trucks and things like that. Uh, you know, little things like including the grill, right? It's not a huge deal, but it is nice to not have to stock it separately. Remember to order it, remember it to include it in your estimate or bid to your customer. Most customers want grills. How many times have we all forgotten about the grill and ended up just giving them away? Because, hey, I already charged this guy thousands of dollars. Am I really going to, you know, uh, squabble over, you know, 60, 80, 100 bucks in grills? Well, you don't have to do that, right? Um, we understand that that's one less thing that you have to worry about. Um, and then, like I said, the power handling on these is fantastic. 600 watts is a lot of power for a slim woofer. And uh, we're pretty conservative with our power ratings even. Um, so I have some of the map pricing up on the screen there. Of course, you know, uh, there is MSRPs available as well, but most shops are selling based off map. So when you look at the power handling, what's included, and if you actually get a chance to hear these, how they sound, you know, a $200 retail woofer that performs like this or 230 for the 12 is incredible. They're nothing short of very surprising, and amazing woofer, um, not just for the money, but just a flat out awesome woofer. So something that's included with all of the woofers too that I didn't really mention yet um, is little things for the installer. Things like um, nut certs and machine thread screws are included for all the woofers. So when you go to mount this, you have your choice. We also include coarse thread, um, you know, just wood screws. So if you're gonna put it into just a prefab inexpensive enclosure, those wood screws are probably fine. If you're doing a nice custom enclosure or maybe something that has a window where you're gonna see the back of the, the magnet of the woofer and see inside the enclosure, those nut certs are a great looking option. And then if you ever have to pull the woofer in and out too, you have uh, the ability to do that without messing up your box. Now, I'm not going to read you guys the packaging, but I do want to just give you a brief snapshot of what that looks like. Even on the packaging, we really tried to keep things simple, okay? I know that when we look at the features and all the technical aspects of a woofer, you could sit there as a company and come up with little acronyms for everything, which is what most companies do. You know, they have their, their vast technology and their TFFL surround and their PTTS uh, spider system and yeah, whatever. You know, most customers and consumers have no idea what any of that is and they don't care. Most of us in the industry that can read that stuff and know what it means also look at it and either don't care or go, yeah, big deal. Everybody has that. You just made up a fancy name for it. Um, that's not very audio control, right? So we would much rather 
not make up a fancy name for everything and just call it what it is. And as far as the packaging goes, let's keep it simple. Let's just put the stuff on the packaging that a sales guy needs to know. So if you're a store that stacks woofers up in the front of the store, that's fine. At least on the box, there's the info that you need. Things like power handling, uh, what depth the woofer is, what size enclosure it's going to fit in, um, the mounting depth, what voice coil it has, and most importantly, what beverage should you be drinking while installing it, right? We got to keep a little bit of that audio control humor baked into these products. That's one of my jobs is making sure that we keep that brand legacy alive. I want every tech that pulls one of these woofers out of the box to install it to notice a few things. You know, I want them to see the time and effort that was put into the design and how nice they look and things like that. But, you know, we want to keep that little bit of humor in there too. The manuals are written in that same kind of funny way that they've always been written. The packaging has a little bit of humor on it, like saying, looking for all the really nerdy specs, check out the user manual or scan this QR code, right? Not very many companies are going to call people nerdy, right, on their packaging. Um, you know, even the pairing section, that's our way of just recommending an amplifier rather than, again, come up with a bunch of acronyms. Instead, let's just recommend what amps we would put with these woofers, but we're doing it in a way that's kind of funny. You know, it's kind of like suggesting a wine with a steak that we'll call that pairings at a lot of steakhouses. We say our sonic sommeliers recommend the following. And if you read those, um, every package for these woofers is different, even from a two-ohm voice coil to a four-ohm voice coil is actually different uh, little sayings on there. So they're kind of fun to read. Um, they're especially fun because I wrote most of them, so I take pride in that. Um, but, you know, like I said, even when a tech pulls these woofers out of the box, I want them to see that this is not just some woofer we slapped our name on. It is truly an audio control product, even down to, you know, on the back of the uh, rubber gasket here, we have things like do not deep fry or saute right up here at the top of the gasket. Uh, there you can kind of see it. So, you know, we really try to keep that, that brand humor alive and well with audio control. Um, go ahead and advance for me. So next up in the, uh, you know, series here is the Spike series. Now, for those of you that have been familiar with audio control for a while, you may recognize Spike. He's been uh, featured in a few little places. He's been in some of our owner's manuals over the years. He popped up in some of our newsletters back in the 80s and early 90s. And he's even made his way onto a few uh, PC boards, like um, some of the early LC2Is used to have Spike on there. He's just kind of our company mascot. Again, just kind of some of that goofy audio control humor. But we wanted to pay homage to the legacy of the brand and make sure we included him uh, in this new kind of evolution of audio control. And so our Spike series subwoofer is what I like to affectionately call the daily driver. Go ahead and advance for me. So the Spike series comes in an eight, eight 10 or 12 inch woofer. Um, again, these are our kind of high performance all around woofer. They are a little bit different materials than the Space series. They are not the same sub, just deeper. They're definitely a different basket design, different magnet structure. Um, really the only thing we share from one to the other is the voice coil. Everything else is totally different design. So when we look at the Spike series, again, you have an eight, 10 or 12 inch. They're all still single voice coil, keeping things simple, you know, keeping things low, low inventory count uh, for you out there that have to deal with that stuff at your shop. And again, they all come with the grill, which is a really handy thing. Um, so all of these woofers are really only available in two versions per size. So even if you want to stock the entire Spike series, you're really only stocking six SKUs, which I think is really, really nice. Um, when you see the power handling too, you know, keep in mind on these little graphics, it says the word max, that is max RMS. That is not peak or max, like I discussed earlier, uh, like most companies do. This is max RMS or continuous power handling. So our eight inch woofer handles 500 watts RMS, is only $200 retail, comes with a grill and absolutely gets down if you get the chance to check one out for yourself. The 10 inch, you know, it handles 700 RMS, runs about 249 retail. And that 12 also handles 700 RMS at 279 retail. So pretty affordable woofers. Again, it puts us kind of right in the middle of that price point and probably the middle of your product mix in your store. If you're considering bringing these in, you know, we kind of fit right in the middle where we're not going to be the most expensive. We're not going to be the cheapest. We're going to be right kind of down the middle, but offer awesome value for that middle price point. That's exactly what we aim to do with pretty much all of our products. Go ahead and advance for me. 
So on that spike series, again, um, not only do these all include the grills, they do also all include those nut certs, machine thread screws, um, coarse thread wood screws, all that good stuff. And again, we really pay attention to the details. These are a beautifully crafted woofer. I mean, this blue color on this basket took us almost four months to get right. Um, you know, we wanted this like bass boat metal flake, low rider metal flake color. And that took time to get right, but it was important to us that it be the right color. Um, you know, little things like that do not deep fry or saute on the back of the gasket. The installers and enthusiasts will love that. Uh, there's even, it's really hard to show it on camera, but there's even a little tiny spike logo right up there. Oh yeah, there you can kind of see them in the light. But um, anyhow, these are what I like to call, again, the daily driver. They work awesome in a small sealed enclosure with moderate power for your average listener. They're great. If you want big bass, you put them in a big vented box, you get lots of power on them and they absolutely get down when you need them to. So they're a good all rounder. You know, I will stack these up against uh, the, the leading competitors in this category. You know, if you look at like some of the op options from Rockford Fosgate or JL Audio, some of those brands, um, these are definitely a strong contender when we pair them up against a uh, similarly priced or similar performance woofer. Again, you'll usually find that we are less money, more power handling, more output, come with a grill, have a better warranty, you know, all good things in my book. So uh, really good, strong contender in that woofer category. The other thing to kind of keep in mind as we go through all of these speakers and subwoofers is profitability. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what program and, you know, how much you're buying it for and selling it for. What you need to know, though, is you are going to make some great money selling audio control. That's our whole goal. Again, we know no shop for the most part is out there going, man, I wish there was another speaker line to look at. Um, there's tons of speakers and subs out there to choose from. So why are you going to choose audio control over a brand that's been making speakers for 20 years, right? We have to give you a strong reason to do that. And one of those reasons is profitability. We all know that generally speaking, you make the most money on the lower tier brands. You usually make the most profit on your entry level brands that you don't feel great about selling to your customers, but hey, it's super profitable. So if it comes back because it's poor quality, at least you made some good money, right? We want you to make that type of profit, but on a high quality product. And that's really what we've done with the audio control speakers and subs. Go ahead and move on for me. So the next thing in the lineup is the PNW series speakers. Again, we didn't do a entry level, mid level, high end. You know, there's so many speakers to choose from. I don't think you need that from another brand. You know, I think the last thing most stereo shops need is another like seventy nine to ninety nine dollar six and a half inch coaxial. There is a million of those out there to choose from. And so we, again, target that little bit higher end line, um, that kind of mid to high area, and we fit really well there. And that's where these PNW speakers lie. So it's a full line offering. We have everything from a one inch tweeter, two and three quarter inch wide band driver for the top dash or uh, sail panel, a pillar applications, all the way up to a six by nine, six by nine component, that sort of thing. Just go ahead and advance for me. <clears throat> So this little video just kind of gives you a, a quick little um, uh, uh, peek at some of the features and tech that's baked into these PNW speakers. You know, it's hard to show a lot of this stuff uh, over video or in a photo. And so, um, uh, or over a PowerPoint, I should say, or in a photo. So the video does a little bit better job of showing some of those details, like those soft silk dome tweeters with the blue behind them. Nice little detail. They are all uh, mica coated cones, which is a really nice feature. Um, that mica coating really helps to make a not only light, but stiff and strong cone material. We do use a large magnet and motor structure on all of these speakers. Yes, it is fairly large. It is not a tiny little Neo magnet. However, it is not very deep. Remember, I said I was an installer for more than half of my career uh, in 12 volt, and I really bring that opinion to the table when we're designing these speakers. Um, you know, I know that depth is always an issue uh, when installing in a lot of modern vehicles. We have a lot of things to contend with. So we were very careful of that when designing the speaker line, and we wanted you to have something that fits all those factory locations. So as you're seeing right now, it's a full line offering with lots of different choices of sizes. 
but we also wanted to make sure that it drops into those factory locations and performs exceedingly well. So as we go through these, I'm not gonna go through every single model of speaker, but I do want you to see some of the options out there and uh, kind of get a good look at them. Now, this video portion right here shows really well that cool clear dust cap, and I'll show it again here in just a moment in person, um, but it's little details like that that make it audio control, right? I mean, we really strive to have neat products that fit the demand of the consumer, but also work for the shop, are not a pain to install, you know, but sound great, offer great value. And I think we've nailed it with the speaker line. Um, I've heard nothing but good things so far from all the dealers that have chosen to uh, pick these up or start selling them. So again, even with all of these speakers, they all include uh, grills and they're very nice, simple, classy, clean grills. We even include extra badges. So if you wanna badge the factory door panel, factory tweeter pod, a pillar, whatever it is, we include extra little audio control badges so that you can do that. Um, we try to think of everything. So go ahead and advance for me there. So when we look at this lineup, um, again, what you're going to notice is these speakers have a few little unique things to them. We did decide to do three ohm drivers on pretty much every model. Uh, the three ohm impedance is absolutely on purpose. We're not the first ones to ever do it, but it's a great idea. So we've continued with it. Um, the three ohm drivers just allow us to offer a speaker that's a little bit you know, not more efficient, but grabbing a little bit more power from that factory or aftermarket amplifier so that we are a little bit louder in your display board. We definitely want to have a speaker that, dis that displays and demos well. Um, any speaker that doesn't demo well in the store usually doesn't end up selling very well either. So it is important that it demos well, but it's also important that it sounds great in the car. Um, obviously, you know, I think we've all probably sold a customer speakers because they walked in and said, Hey, I want to buy new speakers today. So of course you happily sell them speakers. And if their factory head unit and factory amplifier are still in the vehicle and nothing else has been changed, we've all probably ran into that situation where at the end of the day, unfortunately, the car really doesn't sound that good. Um, you know, maybe the highs are a little bit crisper and clearer than they used to be because of the materials but it doesn't get as loud as it used to. A lot of times it doesn't have the mid bass that it used to because those cheap little paper speakers you took out were super efficient and they were designed for that factory sound system. So of course they performed as best as they could. Now you're putting in a high performance aftermarket speaker, which really kind of needs an aftermarket amplifier to drive it, especially when it's a four ohm design. So offering that three ohm design works well. Um, you know, I've yet to run into an aftermarket head unit that has a problem with it. Uh, most factory systems will do it just fine. You know, is it going to work in everything? Of course not. No speaker is going to work in everything, but we've really tried to design these in a way that they not only fit, but work with just about any factory system, um, including, like I said, the depth of the speakers themselves. Uh, I've had dealers pick these up and go, wow, they're heavy, big magnet structure, big motor on here. This, this feels beefy. It feels badass. And it does. Um, but then they usually do get a little concerned over the size of that structure on the back and think, well, but is this going to fit? Uh, I can assure you we've done our testing, we've done our research and development, and our whole goal was to make sure that we had a speaker that fit in the vast majority of modern vehicles. So we did test fit these speakers in, you know, all those top 20 vehicles on the road, um, whether it's a Dodge Ram or a Jeep Wrangler or a Honda, a Chevy, a Ford, whatever. Um, we've really tried to do our homework and, you know, sometimes that meant redesigning a speaker several times to get it right and make it fit and work in that application. Uh, but if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. You know, we had to redesign the six by nine several times before it fit in the front door panels of some of these modern trucks. So that's exactly what we did. One of the things you'll notice too, though, is power handling. Um, there's a lot of power handling on those speakers, um, up to 125 watts RMS on some of the larger sizes. Uh, it's a lot, you know, our amplifiers have been designed to put out a lot of power and we've been pushing those amplifiers for a few years now, um, which is great until you have to design a speaker line that matches up with those amplifiers. And now you have to make a speaker that'll actually take 125 watts or more RMS continuously without failure. And uh, this is how we've done it. So a few things that you'll notice, uh, you can go ahead and advance the slide for me. A few things that you'll notice as you look through the lineup too, we do have something in just about every size. 
um, everything from that uh, two and three quarter inch all the way up to a six by nine. And I'll just point out a few uh, unique things along the way as we look at these, you know, in the component, or excuse me, in the coaxial area, we have a three and a half up to a six by nine. Even our three and a half, you'll notice has four mounting points. This was just an installer requested feature. You know, a lot of techs are sick of their little three and a half inch speakers with two mounting tabs being kind of flimsy and, and rocking back and forth a little bit when they're mounted. The four mounting points just give you a little bit more flexibility. It also allows you to make sure that the speaker is uh, uh, always facing the right direction. If you're picky about how the logos line up, you know, if it's a two post speaker, a lot of times you, you can't make it do that. With the four post design, you can. Um, what you'll notice though throughout the entire line is a few things. One, they're all a soft silk dome tweeter. They do vary in sizes. The three and a half inch, of course, is gonna have a much smaller tweeter than say the six by nine, uh, but they all get the same uh, materials and features and technology. So all soft silk dome tweeters, very smooth response, but they'll get loud, they'll get bright when we need them to. Um, they are all a point source concentric design too. If you don't really know what that is, here's what I'm talking about. If we look at this six and a half, for example, you'll see that that tweeter is at the same plane as the mid base cone. So not only is this never gonna protrude and interfere with a factory door panel, factory grills or anything like that, it's also gonna make sure that our mid cone and our tweeter are basically hitting our ears at the same time because they're at the same level. If we push that tweeter out an inch and a half to two inches on a little post, like a lot of coaxials do, that tweeter is actually hitting your ear first. I know that sounds silly because it's such a small difference. We're talking an inch and a half or two inches, but it does make a big difference. If you were to take a similar speaker that does have a post-mounted tweeter and do an AB comparison, you will actually notice that uh, we do get quite a bit better kind of focused image in the middle of the sound stage with the audio control speakers than most of the speakers with that post-mounted tweeter. So looking through this line, like I said, you'll see there's a three and a half all the way up to a six by nine, even our little, uh, say four inch driver, here's a PNW four for you, uh, is really well built. They feel like they're high quality because they are, they're all a double roll rubber surround. Like I mentioned before, they're a mica coated cone. Not only does it add stiffness and rigidity to the cone material, which is a poly material, it also does add a cool look to it. It has kind of a shimmery effect, which looks nice uh, when you're talking to your customer. Um, and, you know, on the backside here, a few things to point out as well. Again, we try to think of the installation tech. We've already gasketed the back of every speaker with a really nice like neoprene foam gasket. So you don't have to sit there and peel and stick them yourselves. It's already done for you on every single speaker. Um, and even down to the little details, you may notice up at the top of your screen where it says PNW series, there's a little tree, mountain, and river. That's our little kind of logo for the PNW, Pacific Northwest, where Audio Control founded and got its start. Um, we've included those little logos as like a little Easter egg almost on every different line. So the Space Series subwoofers have like a little spaceship. The Spike Series has the little spike guy. Uh, PNW Series has that little uh, mountain tree and water. And on say this PNW4, it's right on the input terminals tab. I'll try to show it there as best I can. There you can kind of see it. So again, you know, is that stuff important? Eh, it depends on who you ask. It's important to me because I want to keep audio control, audio control. I don't want to see us selling $30 Bluetooth speakers and slapping audio control on them, right? I want to see audio control stay the awesome brand that it has been for almost 50 years. And that's the type of stuff that audio control loves and our enthusiasts and customers and shops appreciate. So we're trying to keep all of that stuff alive. Um, so even your small speakers, like your four inch, et cetera, are going to include grills. Um, when the only one that doesn't is that five by seven uh, for obvious reasons. But as we go forward, if you'll advance for me, we'll take a look at some of the other models here. Um, even though we've got components up on the screen, I do wanna mention real quick on say the coaxial here. So this is your six and a half inch coaxial, one of your most popular sizes. And as you can see, yes, this is a large motor and magnet structure on this speaker. It has to be to handle the type of power we're asking it to handle. Um, but you'll also notice it is not very deep. I mean, we're talking, I don't know, maybe not even three of my fingers deep. Um, you know, I, I could bust out a tape measure if we really wanna know, but it's in the charts and specs and website if you're curious. Um, but it does fit. They are, you know, 
really been engineered to make sure that they fit all those applications. Um, so when we look into the coax or excuse me, component side of things in the PNW series, we have two main lines or two main models, I should say. The PNW 65 CS2 and the 69 CS2. CS me meaning component speaker, two meaning two-way. So these are gonna be a two-way component system. Um, again, some really cool stuff baked into these, and I love talking about the components. They sound so good. They have so much mid-bass. I'm a sucker for big mid-bass. I love mid-bass that kicks my calf from the door panel. You know, it just has that punch up front. I love that. And these PNW speakers definitely deliver on that. So I'm going to grab a couple of the speakers here uh, just as we're talking and kind of show you guys some of the, the cool features in there. One of the things that I alluded to earlier a little bit, and this is totally cosmetic, by the way, but I love it. And that is the clear dust cap. So you can really see that clear dust cap on this six by nine pretty well. The light's glaring on it a little bit, but you get the idea. That audio control logo back there is not a sticker. That's actually laser etched on the top of the pole piece in the motor and magnet structure. It's really, really cool. Again, does it do anything for sound? Absolutely not. But uh, it does look great in your display board or in your sound room. And it's a really good conversation starter when you're talking to a customer. Most people have never seen that before. I'll be honest. I've never seen a speaker that has a clear dust cap like that before. Um, not at least it shows it off on purpose. So uh, pretty cool. So this is the six by nine component midwoofer. Like I said, uh, pretty good sized magnet structure and motor structure on the back, but not super deep, not so big that it's not going to fit in all these modern applications. Um, again, pre-gasketed for you. There are even a rubber gasketed on the front in case it is pressing against something and there's zero protrusion from the front of the speaker so that magnet or excuse me that um, double roll rubber surround does not protrude past that rubber gasket that's around the uh, outside of the speaker there so I know that's important for a lot of you that are fitting these into tight spaces behind factory panels that sort of thing it's important to us too. When we look at details, um, one of the other things I love on the component set, uh, maybe because I had a big hand in helping design them, is the crossovers and the tweeter. So when we look at our tweeter, it is the PNW-1 tweeter is what it's called. And the PNW-1 is a really nicely made tweeter. It is a, a little over one inch component tweeter. Again, it's a soft silk dome tweeter. And this, I can't express how nice it is through the camera, uh, but when you see these in person, you'll agree, I'm sure. They are a milled aluminum housing with a laser etched logo on the front. And even all the logos on the back are all laser etched on there. So it just feels really high quality. You know, when you pull these out of the box, they feel nice, they're heavy, they're solid. They don't feel like some cheap little set of tweeters because they're not. Um, even down to the wire, right? I mentioned earlier, we are all about the details. This is a good example of that. I personally hate, I repeat, hate that clear speaker wire with the little red stripe on it. I, that stuff drives me crazy. I despise that stuff. So when we designed these speakers, I made sure we used some really nice blue and black twisted wire. It's heavier gauge than you find on even some really expensive tweeters. It just makes for a nicer presentation and just a nicer speaker all around. You know, I don't ever want a tech to put these in and go, man, that wire is so small. My wire strippers won't even strip it, right? Or I can cut this by ripping it with my hands. You're not going to have that with our tweeters. In that component set, every component set is going to come with four crossovers, okay? So it's going to come with two of the LF1s and two of the HF1s. The idea here, guys, is like I said, I worked in a shop for 15 years. I worked in the same stereo shop 15 years here in the Pacific Northwest. I know what happens at say 5 p.m. on a Friday when a tech is putting component speakers in and the tweeter is in the A pillar and the midwoofer is in the door and he's in a rush because he's trying to go home because his girlfriend is blowing him up on his cell phone. And so what ends up happening, right? They go, oh, I don't want to run wire back and forth. I can't find a place for this crossover. You know what? I'm going to put a base blocker on that tweeter. I'm going to run that mid-range full range and ship it. And some of you out there I know are laughing right now because you know I'm right. You don't want me looking through your technician's toolboxes because I promise you they have a drawer that has some crossovers in it. Um, so what I wanted to do is try to alleviate that. And the way that we've done that is with separated crossovers. So the idea here, guys, is if we are putting our tweeter in the A pillar or the 
uh, dash or something like that, we can put the HF1 crossover near the tweeter if we want to. Then when we put our midwoofer in the door, let's say we can put our LF1 near the woofer in the door or in the kick panel or wherever it's gonna go. And that way it's simple. You don't have to try to find a way to run wire back and forth in and out of a door that has a Molex plug or anything like that. We can just put the crossover near where it needs to go. Now with that comes a complication. What happens, hey Matt, these crossovers look great, but what if this little guy is too big? What if I can't fit this HF1 crossover in say the A pillar? Maybe the tweeter is in the A pillar and it's a very thin A pillar, now what? Okay, this metal crossover is not going to fit every time. I get that. So here's what we've done. If you undo the four screws on the end of this crossover, you can take this end panel off and the entire crossover board slides out of the metal enclosure. Now you can just put a piece of heat shrink on there, which we include. We give you the heat shrink and the heat shrink is silk screened with this same text on it already for you. So all you gotta do is slide that heat shrink on there, heat shrink it with a heat gun real quick. And now you can zip tie your crossover to a wiring harness or wherever you need to zip tie it and get the job done quickly. Because again, if we're gonna have to kinda half-ass it, let's make it look like we didn't, right? We're, we're trying to make you guys look good. That's our whole goal. Um, so on these crossovers, a couple more things before I stop talking about these. Uh, enough already, Matt, they're just crossovers. Um, so there is the tweeter um, attenuation here. So there is a zero dB, negative three and negative six. Any crossover that has a plus setting on it is lying to you. There's no such thing as a plus setting on a crossover. It can only go up to zero. So again, we're not gonna lie to you. It goes up to zero. That's the brightest, the loudest the tweeter is gonna get. Drop it down to negative three or negative six to kind of soften that tweeter a little bit, depending on its location or your customer's listening habits, that sort of thing. One last thing on the crossovers, if they are going to go right next to each other, let's say you get lucky and you're doing a car that has the six by nine and the tweeter both in the door. Okay, lucky you. Well, you can actually put these right next to each other and you'll notice on the LF1, Yes, it has only two channels of input or one positive, one negative, but on the output side, it has an output for the woofer itself. It also has just a pass through. This pass through is to go in to the input of your HF1. So this way the tech isn't trying to split speaker wires or do anything cheesy. You're just gonna run wire into one crossover, out of it into the other crossover, and then out of each crossover to the mid and tweeter as necessary. So pretty cool stuff, I think. I love those crossovers. Gotten a lot of positive feedback from technicians thanking me for designing those the way that we did. I hope you feel the same way. One last thing on the crossover topic, if you're not sick of me talking about crossovers yet, you will be soon, um, is we also have the piece down in the corner. You might be wondering what that is. That is the PNW XN3. And we're gonna talk more about what this guy does and how to wire it in just a moment. But our idea here is, let's say we're gonna do three ways, right? I personally own a 2018 Toyota Tundra. It has a six by nine, two and three quarter, and a tweeter in the front in each corner. So it's six speakers in the front, three-way setup from the factory. Of course, I'm gonna to wanna to go three-way speakers aftermarket. So I would use that six by nine I just showed you with that one inch tweeter, but I would also want to add my PNW 275. That's this little guy. This is our wide band two and three quarter inch driver. This again features that cool clear dust cap with that laser etch logo on the top of the pole piece. And what's really neat about this is that it's a wide band driver. What does that mean? It means that even though it doesn't have a specific silk tweeter in the middle or metal tweeter in the middle, it does actually play up into the higher frequencies far enough to be considered full range. So this little speaker will play from about 100 Hertz up to 20 K. Believe it or not, this can be your tweeter and your mid range at the same time. A lot of OEMs are doing this. For those of you that have been around a little while, how many Grand Cherokees came in with blown top dash speakers, right? They used to come in all the time. So if that's the application, sure, you can drop in a set of PNW 275s, just drop them into those factory spots and they will work just fine. They do come with a little included inline filter that plugs in um, right in line just to make sure that they're not getting too much bass sent to them. 
But if you're going to do something cool or custom or try to do a three-way setup where you're going to have maybe a six and a half, two and three quarter and tweeter, or six by nine, two and three quarter and tweeter, well, at that point, we have a choice to make, right? We're either going to go active where we're going to use no crossovers and use a DSP or DSP amplifier, or we're going to go passive. Now, passive, in my opinion, is okay, but that would mean I would have to install six individual little crossovers. That's kind of a lot, right? I mean, that seems a little tedious to me as far as crossovers go. So instead, what we've done is, you know, we really feel that most people going three-way are probably going to go active anyway. So we don't include this crossover in any kits. It doesn't come in any of our sets. You just order it and sell it when needed. And that is the PNW XN3. The XN3 is actually a unique piece of tech. Believe it or not, nobody really offers this for some reason. Um, it is a passive three-way crossover network all in one case. So this is going to run all six speakers worth of ins and outs in one chassis. So yes, it is not small. Yes, you're probably going to need to put it by your amplifier, but you aren't having to install six of these little guys. So the idea here, if you'll advance the slide for me, is a few things, and we're gonna dive into those. We've already kind of talked about the three ohm versus four ohm speaker thing. Um, we can kind of skip past that. We've already chatted a little bit about it. Um, but, oh, I did forget to mention this. So let's talk about this for a moment here. My apologies. The PNW-1 tweeter. We mentioned earlier that it comes in those component sets. It absolutely does. But what I didn't mention is that it is now also available separately. So if you just need a pair of high quality tweeters by themselves, you can now order the PNW-1 tweeter set and you can get them all alone. Um, I carry around the PNW ones for these trainings because it's the smallest box, uh, but it's a great way to show off our packaging too. The packaging is really nice. It's got a nice kind of matte finish to it, um, almost like an Apple branded product, like your iPhone box or something like that kind of has that feel to it. We've even put magnets in the closure on the box. So it has a really nice feel. Um, again, you know, sometimes that's just about the, the, presentation if you're showing them to a customer over the counter. But also I want you guys and your techs to get the feel for these two that, hey, these are a really high quality product because they are. The reason I wanna bring up the, the tweeters real quick though is initially when we designed these tweeters, um, the very first run of them, so to speak, did not come apart. So if you talk to your buddy who picked up audio control speakers when they very first came out and he said, yeah, those are great, but they don't come apart on the tweeter. Yes, they do. They do now. So if you were to order speakers today, you are going to get these ones, which unscrew beautifully. It's still that nice milled aluminum housing with the laser etched logos. But what's great is now our tweeter just pops out of the assembly like so. And now I have a few options. I can do a couple of cool different things. I can snap on this little plastic ring. If you'll advance the next slide for me, please. And now that this is snapped on, and you can kind of click through these for me. Um, now that this is snapped on, I have an OEM style tweeter that'll drop in to most factory locations. Our research suggests that this will fit in about 70% of factory tweeter openings with no brackets, no hot glue, no back strap, no plumber's tape, none of that. This will literally snap in to so many factory openings. It's such a time saver. And it just gives a nice finished look to the tweeter even though it's gonna be buried behind a factory grill. Um, the other option you have is to, of course, leave it in its metal housing and you can use the nice little U-shaped brackets right here and attach those on the back. We include all the hardware to do so, no big deal. But one last thing on these tweeters is we now also include these great brackets. These brackets will go from a two and three quarter inch or three and a half inch factory dash opening and allow you to put our tweeter in that place. It's awesome for the new uh, Jeep Wranglers that have very limited space on that factory three and a half inch dash opening. This allows you to drop our tweeter in there. This also comes now with the PNW 275s. So if you're gonna put the 275s into a three and a half inch opening, these brackets can also be used for that. These brackets also now come in all of the component sets. So just keep that in mind. If you don't remember anything else, just remember all the component sets, all the tweeters and the two and three quarter come with basically everything you could need, okay? We include all the brackets, everything we could think of that an installer would need to properly install these in a modern vehicle. Go ahead and advance for me if you would. 
Um, when we talk about those crossovers, we can skip through these pretty quick. I just wanted to kind of show you the layout of how these get wired up. If you have a channel for every speaker, great. You can still go passive and you can use those independent crossovers. If you have only two channels, like in a lot of factory setups, you can just use the two channel system. You're gonna go into the LF1, out of it into your HF1 if need be, or you can run into them separately, doesn't make any difference. And you're still gonna get independent outputs to each driver. Go ahead and advance for me. And then if we have the PNW XN3, you can see all the different switches and things on here. This is a cool piece for a couple of reasons. This is going to be great if we only have a limited amount of inputs. Go ahead and advance the screen for me. So let's say we have a vehicle that only has two channels of power coming from the factory head unit or factory amplifier, or even aftermarket amplifier. Your customer can only afford a good two channel. They can't afford a six channel, but their vehicle has six front speakers. Now what, right? So that's the idea here. If you can give me as few as two channels of input into an XN3, I'm still gonna give you all six channels out. And you have the ability to attenuate the tweeters and attenuate the mid ranges, depending on your needs and the speaker locations. When we look at the XN3 with a four channel, now we're in bi amp mode. So again, maybe your customer bought a four channel amp from you a month ago. It's a great amplifier. It was expensive. He doesn't want to get rid of it. You don't want to trade it in and do a return or an exchange, of course. So what do we do? Well, we sell that customer an XN3. We sell him all six speakers that he needs, right? Or two pairs of speakers, whatever we're going to do. And in this case, even with only four channels of input, I'm still getting all six channels of output from this crossover. Go ahead and advance. And lastly, of course, if you do have a six channel amp or a four channel and a two channel or whatever you got, you can also use the XN3 for that. So whether it's two, four or six channels of input, you're always getting all six channels of output. Now, one final note on the XN3. If you haven't already gotten your gears turning and thinking about this, just remember, this is sold separately. You can order it whenever you need it. You don't have to order it with speakers. This sells for about 150 or so in most retail stores, 150 to 190, somewhere in there, depending on your shop and what you want to make for profit. Um, but this piece can be used for all sorts of things. Keep in mind, almost every BMW, right, up until not that long ago, had a factory amplifier that had the crossovers for every single speaker built into it. So what happens when your customer comes in, has a BMW, just as an example, that has three-way front stage, but the factory amp has gone bad. That happens a lot, honestly. Now, if you're gonna sell this customer a new amplifier, but the car is 20 years old, is he gonna buy all the amplifiers he needs to run every single channel in that car and do it with a DSP and do it active? Maybe, but maybe not, right? So let's say we just have a four channel amp and we're trying to drive that entire BMW's worth of speakers. How are we gonna do that? Well, if you're smart, you would use one or maybe even two of these. And with two of these, we could drive 12 speakers off of a four channel amplifier and do it safely with the right crossover points and make it easy. And it looks nice. It's also something tangible you can sell your customer and make money on and charge them to install. Could you do that same car by going back there with caps and coils and base blockers and make it happen? Sure you could. It's going to look trashy when it's done and you don't have a lot you can charge for because caps and coils are cheap and they look cheap, but you could do it. Or you could take an XN3, drop it in, make some money. It looks nice and away you go. Now, the crossover points are not going to be perfect for every speaker out there. Of course, they were designed for our speakers, but they're going to be close enough when doing those factory systems where you're using the factory speakers to absolutely turn out a great install that sounds good and your customer is going to be happy with. Moving on. Let's take a look at the new enclosures. These are very exciting for us. We have wanted to do audio control enclosures for quite some time. Again, um, it's not something that we, you know, um, have always had the manpower, the resources, or the people to do. But once we developed subwoofers, we knew right away the next stop has to be loaded enclosures. So let me ask you this. How do you develop a loaded enclosure 
that's better than everybody else's, right? There's not that much out there you can do to revolutionize the loaded speaker enclosure. So how do we do that? Well, we take the Space Series woofer and we load it into a slim sealed wedge enclosure. And there's a couple of really cool things baked into these. We make it in a 10 or 12, the SPC W10 or SPC W12. Here's the cool parts. This enclosure is built to our standards. This is built the way I would want a box built if I was still a custom fabricator. It is double layer front baffles, one and a half inches thick, super strong. It actually also allows us to countersink the woofer though. So we get a little bit tighter clearance. Great for those tight space behind the back seat type installs. Also, you may notice the rounded design. That top, back and bottom panels of the box are all one piece of MDF that's been kerfed and rolled to be one piece. The front and sides are also one piece. So that enclosure just sandwiches together like this. It's a beautiful thing. It's super strong. It makes for almost, uh, or not almost, it makes for far less um, joints, right? Where there's a crease or a crack that could potentially leak in the future. Um, it's just a much better built enclosure. They're also poly filled on the inside. They're braced in the corners. They have um, marine grade vinyl on the front and the side panels, which looks nice. It also adds texture so that it's a nice looking uh, enclosure that also holds up to the elements and, and doesn't scratch and wear. It'll never get all pilly and gross like carpeted boxes do. Um, but then on the top, back and bottom, we've sprayed it in Stinger Roadkill. Now this is not your traditional bed liner. Everybody looks at it and goes, oh, it's sprayed in bed liner. It is not bed liner. It is like bed liner, but it's a much finer texture. It sounds and feels better. It sounds better, meaning it has some sound properties to it, where it actually does help dampen resonance and vibrations. Um, and then of course, these enclosures are fully sealed. Couple other notes on these. Go ahead and advance the slide for me if you would. With these woofers, there is a couple of cool things here. Um, this video, we can probably skip through here in a moment. I'll tell you when to advance it. But uh, this shows a couple of neat things that I can't explain very well, um, or at least can't explain in photos. So again, we offer these in a 10 or a 12. They're a great sounding box. I can tell you from personal experience, these fit really well behind the back seat of a 2018 Tundra, which is a tight spot to fit when you have the Crew Max cab. Here's one of my favorite things is that quick plug connector. You'll notice we have two terminals on these boxes. Those terminals are the traditional push button terminals, but they're also the XT90 connector, which is a quick connect. We also built in mounting system. So never again are we driving drywall screws or some damn thing right into our brand new enclosure. Um, we do do a internal support system, like I mentioned earlier. This is essentially our internal bracing. We even mount the woofer using those nice nut certs I was talking about earlier. If you didn't know what I was talking about when I mentioned nut certs coming with every woofer, these are what I'm talking about, those little metal backing plates that allow you to screw the woofer in and have it seal up and uh, be serviceable. Um, that little connector on the side though, like I mentioned, is really cool. Um, it allows us to have an alternative connection method. And really what that does is just make it so if your customer is going to take the woofer out for the weekend because they need the space or whatever, they're never again going to potentially plug it in backwards. Also, while the enclosure is out of the vehicle, they don't have bare wire laying around in the trunk or cargo area of their vehicle that can touch together and short out an amplifier. Um, so it really kind of dummy proofs the whole thing is the idea. When you look at these, you can see over on the right side of your screen, they fit under a seat, they fit behind a seat. That mounting system is brilliant. It's built into both sides of the enclosure. We include powder coated brackets and stainless steel hardware. And the idea here is whether this box is laying on its back or standing upright, those brackets still reach the mounting points and you can have a nice way to mount this without using back strap or making some sort of brackets driving screws right into this brand new enclosure your customer bought. None of that, it's all built in. And of course it comes with it. Um, go ahead and advance for me. One of the other things that I will mention on these enclosures that I love to talk about a little bit, and it applies to both of our new loaded enclosure series, both Space and Spike, is that we use the off the shelf woofer. 
So if you sell your customer a Space Series 10-inch woofer off the shelf today, and later on their friend comes and buys the Space Series 10-inch loaded enclosure, they are getting the exact same woofer, okay? It doesn't just look the same from the front. It is the same woofer. What we don't want is what I've seen happen with other brands. And that is you're selling your customer based on the look of the woofer from the front, and then unfortunately, if that woofer ever blows, you take the woofer out of the box and you find out that, you know what, this is not the sub I thought it was. It looked like that sub I thought it was. But when you get to the backside of it, a lot of other manufacturers use a woofer that is at best cosmetically not the same. They'll not put on the woofer uh, magnet, um, magnet cover or boot. They won't paint the back of it. They won't put the labels on it, all that stuff, right? Okay, fine. That's just cosmetics. But sometimes the worst side of that is you'll get uh, brands that don't put in the same woofer at all, but cosmetically from the front, make it appear to be one of their popular woofers. That's a little bit bait and switch. It's a little bit shady if you ask me, but the worst part of that is if your customer ever blows that woofer, now you can't just take a woofer off the shelf and swap it out for them because it's not the same sub. With us, you can. We are putting the exact same sub in there. Um, on the Spike series enclosures, you can go ahead and advance for me. I'll start talking as the video plays. Um, this is available in a 8, 10, and 12 inch size. You can go ahead and continue. Um, really good picture of those terminals there and that bracket system. You can see how these kind of fit and work uh, in that vehicle. That's a Hyundai Palisade you're seeing at the bottom center there, by the way, showing an 8, 10, and 12. I love that eight inch uh, ported or vented woofer enclosure. That thing absolutely slams with a little eight in there. It's so impressive for such a small box. Go ahead and advance for me. One of the other things I think is really cool on these boxes you're about to see in this video. Um, again, power handling on these is all gonna be the same as the woofer. So 500 watts on the eight, 700 on the 10 or 12. All of our loaded enclosures, whether space or spike series, are single two ohm impedance enclosures. All right. So the idea is most customers buying one of these are only going to buy one. And we want to make sure that it matches up with our amplifier as well and that we get the most power out of those amps. So here you can see that quick plug connector again. It's really handy. It comes with that pigtail, of course, in the box. Here you can see that versatile mounting system, uh, again, integrated into that same panel, which is very nice. And here's my favorite part. In the Spike Series enclosures, we use an, an internal brace support system, and you're about to see how cool this is. When they mount the woofer, the woofer magnet is actually supported by that internal brace. Now, this does a couple of things. It takes all the weight and stress off the front baffle of the enclosure, and it really makes sure that we have an ultra tight, ultra strong box. And it's not so much that we're worried about damage or leaks or cracks or anything in normal use. It's more, well, I think we've all had UPS deliver something that's a little damaged before, right? Um, it's, it's more transport that we're honestly worried about. Those Spike Series woofers are not light. Um, you know, they're not as heavy as some of the other subs out there in the world, but it's not light by any stretch. So we want to make sure we took all the weight off of that front baffle from that huge magnet. You know, we don't want it kind of buckling that front under, uh, you know, when UPS tosses it or FedEx tosses it onto the truck. Um, they are all well packed, by the way. But so these are internally polyfilled and braced and supported as well. Same thing, Stinger Roadkill on the outside, uh, top, back and bottom, marine grade vinyl on the front and sides. Um, when we look at the prefab preloaded vehicle specific enclosures, um, these have also been updated. So a lot of you have already done or sold or installed these in the past. Maybe you did the Bronco, maybe you done the Wrangler, whatever the case may be. These used to come with a Phoenix Gold woofer in them, okay? Now they've all been updated to include the Audio Control Space Series woofers. Now what's happened is the part number stayed the same, the prices stayed the same. Good news for you guys. The Great news is that now all these boxes handle 200 watts RMS more power. They play about 10 hertz lower than they used to. They sound better and they get about 15% louder than the previous generation. So if you still have one of those older models in stock, make sure to move that thing out quickly. Maybe put a few dollars on sale or whatever you got to do. Move that one out. Get these new ones in with that Space Series woofer. It is a definite upgrade. So along this same family, we just released recently the um, underseat enclosure for the Gladiator, 
which has two spike eights in it, vented. Now that is ported towards the back of the vehicle and the woofers fired down. I can assure you this box absolutely slams. Um, and not just slams four two eights, like it just gets down. That box absolutely gets it. Um, also keep in mind that's two eight inch woofers. That box handles a thousand Watts RMS. Like that thing rips. Uh, if you don't believe me, go on YouTube, look for Dean and Fernando at five star car stereo. They just installed one of these enclosures and did a quick review. Dean is very hard to please. If you know him at all, or have seen any of his videos, he can be a tough critic sometimes. So for him to go on there and say, this thing sounds great and gets loud, that's a pretty good vote of confidence. Now those enclosures, uh, this enclosure, also has that quick connector on it, that XT90 quick disconnect harness, as well as bolting up to all factory mounting points. And that is a full fiberglass enclosure. That is not a, um, I don't know, uh, you know, partial wood, partial fiberglass, partial plastic, whatever. You know, a lot of them are doing like roto molded plastic and this and that. That's a real fiberglass box, okay? It's the same thing you'd probably build yourself if you were gonna make that, but you couldn't build this enclosure you couldn't get the, the materials to build this enclosure for what we are selling it to you for with those woofers in it. It's a really good value. Um, if I recall, uh, map pricing on that is between 650 to 700-ish right in there, if I recall. Don't quote me on that, but it's a bargain for that box. Um, I wouldn't build you that box as a tech for 650 bucks without the woofers in it, let alone uh, one with the woofers. So definitely check that one out next time you have a Gladiator customer. Uh, the other one on the right here is an interesting box. The TXTRB10 is our universal single 10 inch woofer box. It's a really cool little enclosure. It can be used down firing. You can put it up as a wedge enclosure, like behind a seat. You can put it on a floorboard. You can do any normal, any, any set of things with it uh, in normal installs. But what's really unique about it is of course, it's been updated with an audio control woofer now, which is great. But what's really cool is we have this little uh, additional module you can buy. So if you look at the left side of the enclosure, you'll see there's six little bolts there, hex head bolts. That panel, you undo those six bolts, Let's say your customer bought this enclosure. I'm backing up a little bit. Let's say your customer bought this enclosure. They buy an amplifier from you. You install it. They're happy. Everybody's good. And then a couple months down the line, they come back and they say, man, you know, I wish I would have bought a second one. Do I have enough amplifier to buy a second woofer? What can I do? Well, if their budget doesn't support them buying another woofer or a second woofer and a second amplifier because they don't have enough power, Here's what you can do. You undo those six little bolts on the side and you can bolt up our um, additional port module, which is the TXTRB10BB. What that does is it adds some additional airspace to the enclosure and adds a port. We all know you can't just take a sealed box, blast a hole in it and call it ported, right? Our customers have probably asked us to do that or tried themselves and we all know that's disastrous. But if we add some airspace, and a port, well, that's doable, right? So that's exactly what we've done with this. You bolt on this additional module and now you've turned a sealed box into a ported box legitimately. And you've gotten them somewhere between three to six dB of extra output with no additional power and very little extra space taken up and about 20 minutes of install time to drop that port module in there. So it's a really cool upgradable enclosure. Moving on. We're going to wrap things up here in just a second, guys. I know we're getting close to the end of time, and I want to keep this on time. Now, this doesn't strictly fall under the audio control topic. This is more of a pack product, but I do like to talk about them at the end. This is our uh, Lock Pro Advanced T harnesses. They come in what's called the LPH or APH harnesses. If you're not already familiar with these, I like to bring them up because they can greatly simplify yeah. installation. Um, LPH and APH, the way to remember them, APH. Think of it as amplified, premium sound systems, sound systems that have a factory amplifier, A for amplifier, APH harness. LPH, I remember it as low power, is how I remember the LP, like deck power or base model sound system. That's your LPH harness. So LPH harnesses plug in behind the head unit, APH harnesses plug in at the factory amplifier. Next slide, please. So when you look at these harnesses, here's what's unique. There's lots of T harnesses out there, guys. That's not revolutionary. Here's what's cool. Up at the top of your screen, let's say you're just doing an LC2i Pro and you're just gonna do a base amp install. 
Cool. So all I need is just to steal some signal. I need to T into that signal. I don't need to interrupt it. I just need to grab a little bit of signal from it, right? So you can plug in an LPH harness. You can bench prep your whole install now, which is fantastic for those of us that are getting older and don't want to be bent over in the car any more than we have to, myself included. Um, and we could bench prep that LPH harness and our LC2i Pro all up at the bench, walk out to the car behind the deck, plug, plug, and drop a 2i Pro inside the dash if I want to. And now I have RCAs hanging down just like it was an aftermarket deck. Pretty cool. Our T harness is gonna give you speaker level for your input. It's gonna give you power and ground and turn on when possible, depending on the vehicle. But we're not interrupting the signal, we're just teeing in. But what if I need to interrupt the signal because I'm gonna do a four channel and a mono or a five channel amp setup? Well, that takes you down to the bottom of the screen. So let's say we take that same harness, but now we're going to Y into the signal is how I describe it. So now what we're going to use is say something like a LP5i Pro or LC5i Pro, LC7i Pro, something like that. With these modules, with these LOCs, you know, like the 5i Pro is a great example. All I need is four channels of input. And if I'm doing a basic vehicle where I can use like an LPHT harness, I can go in behind the radio, plug in this harness. And what's great is we have these little black connectors on there. If you leave them plugged in, you're still powering the speakers from the factory deck. If I unplug them, I've now broken that signal. And now I can feed one side of it into my LOC and I can feed the other side of it with signal from my aftermarket amplifier. That's great, but what if my amp is not going to be close enough to do that T-harness? Well, that's where the part down in the bottom right corner of your screen comes in, the LPH EXT-17. That's a 17-foot extension harness. Think of it as two chunks of nine wire with the proper connectors already on it. Look, we all know techs are getting harder to find, right? We don't have young installers banging down our doors saying, can I work here? Can I work here? Please, 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 right? We wish we did, but we don't. So I need to make the install as simple as possible for when I do have a new green young tech that I'm still training, I want to make sure he can't mess up polarity, right? I want to make sure this happens quickly, effectively, efficiently. I want to make sure that even a seasoned vet still makes mistakes, right? We don't have to go into the vehicle, cut harnesses and try to figure out polarity of everything. I can literally plug this thing in, unplug these little black micro fit connectors, plug in my extension harness and drop it through the dash, put the dash back together. And now I have signal and power and ground into my LOC. I have signal from my aftermarket amp back out to the speakers and all is well with the world. I have simplified this install and I've probably reduced your install time by say 50% on some vehicles. It's, it's awesome. I know it seems simple. It's nothing to write home about. You're not super excited, but when you put one of these in and see how much easier your life is, it's pretty damn exciting. Trust me. Next slide, please. So on those LPA harnesses, this is just a brief little uh, application chart. This is on our website. By all means, you can reference this later, um, but I just want you to see how many vehicles we do cover. We cover pretty much everything from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, all the Chrysler family. We cover the Fords, all the GM vehicles for the most part, and then select Hyundais, Kias, Hondas, Teslas, BMWs, Volkswagens. We have quite a lot that we cover most of the popular vehicles on the road today, we have a harness for. But what if your car has a factory amplifier? What if it came with premium sound? Next slide. Now we're talking APA harnesses. Now APA harnesses, there's not gonna be as many of them, but this is different from our Amp Pro product. Many of you are familiar with the Pack Amp Pro. Now that's a T harness that has a module that is gonna give you perfectly flat signal out. But what if we don't make an Amp Pro for that vehicle? What if nobody makes a preamp solution for that vehicle? Now what? Well, you can use an APH harness. This is gonna plug in at the factory amplifier. And again, it's gonna break out your signal into inputs and outputs. So now you can feed those inputs, which is the output from the factory amplifier, now becomes your input to your aftermarket LOC or aftermarket amplifier. And the output from your aftermarket amp you're installing will go to the other side of this Y harness. You again have alleviated any confusion as to which wires go to what, um, which, what the polarity is, they're all tagged, they're all labeled. 
Uh, I did one of these in a Ford with Sony premium sound recently, like an F350. And I mean, we even have the tweeter wires labeled. We have the subwoofer wires labeled, the center channel. They're all there in that APH harness. It is a thing of beauty. Definitely check these out if you're not already familiar. Um, you can go ahead and advance the slide. This is one thing that I do like to touch on briefly before we wrap things up. Um, basically, LGDs are important, okay? We are building these into a lot of our products, things you're probably already familiar with, like the LC1i, the 2i Pro, the Epicenter Micro. Now, the LC5i Pro, 7i Pro also feature all these LGDs built in. But what I'm hearing a lot is installers saying, hey, I did a XYZ vehicle last week and I didn't put in LGDs and it worked fine. The reason I bring these up guys is because just because you did a vehicle recently and didn't use them doesn't mean you didn't need to. There's a very good chance that that vehicle may still come back later for issues. That factory radio may fail early uh, or earlier than it should uh, shorten the lifespan of it, so to speak, because you didn't put a load on its outputs or it could even be an audible difference. For example, a lot of Hondas, if you don't load down the factory outputs, it'll still work. It doesn't do what Chrysler's do where they cut the output altogether, but a lot of Hondas will actually have a little less sparkle, a little less high end or high frequency detail um, in the music, in the signal path. So keep these in mind. If you're wondering when to use which one, there is a rhyme or reason to them. This sheet you're seeing in front of you right now is available as a PDF on our website. Um, also, I'll give you the straight and narrow, the real quick brief version. If it's 2018 or older, let's say 2017 older, we wanna use the blue LGD, just AC LGD. If it's 18 and up with a factory base model sound system where the head unit is powering the speakers, we wanna generally use the AC LGD 20, which is the green one. If it's 18 and up and it has a factory amplified or premium sound system, I wanna use the AC LGD 60. Now those are not cut and dry. There are situations where amplified vehicles will use a 20. There are situations where a base model vehicle will use a 60. There's no perfect answer. We are, however, working on compiling an exact list of exactly what vehicles and year and make model and trim of sound system need which ones. That's coming soon. The other thing I will remind you of is if you're ever not sure which one to use, use the 20. The green LGD-20, if you have to just cast a net and hope for the best, the LGD-20 covers the most applications of any LGD, and it is your best bet when you're unsure of what to use. So with that, I will leave you with that note. Um, we could do four more hours of training if we all had time, uh, but I think that about wraps it up for us tonight. If there's any quick questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, we will uh, call this a day for tonight's training. And you can either drop questions in the chat or you are welcome to just unmute yourself and ask. Um, you can also shoot me an email. It is just mpalumbo at ampglobal.com or mpalumbo at stingersolutions.com. And uh, I'll be happy to answer questions via email if that's easier for some of you, if you'd rather write it out. Or again, if you'd like to unmute and ask them now, that's fine too. I'll stay on for a couple of minutes. Are you doing anything for the hardware world? I'm sorry, for the which world? The Harley Davidson world. Oh, sure. Are you talking as far as integration or uh, anything specific? Um, integration, yes. Okay, so um, on the audio control side of things, the LGDs are already being used in a lot of Harley installs as far as loading down that factory radio and keeping it from producing weird noises and things like that. We are also working on um, some integration products that I can't really talk about too much at the moment. I don't wanna to divulge too much, but the answer I guess to your question simply would be yes, we are working on some more Harley solutions. Um, but I will also be honest and say that motorcycles and Harleys are not audio controls, you know, primary focus like some other brands out there right now, but we do want to provide you solutions at least for integrating with them. So, you know, are you going to see a full speaker subwoofer kit for Harleys from audio control? Probably not, um, but we will absolutely be looking to provide more integration solutions for those bikes.
All right. Well, I don't think I see anything else. Uh, cool. Well, I think that's it for tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around for training. And uh, maybe we'll schedule another one of these in the future to cover all the products that we didn't cover tonight. I know tonight was just basically new products from Audio Control. Uh, maybe we'll look forward to doing one in the future where we kind of uh, cover over some of the LC um, amplifiers, D-series amplifiers, DMRTA, um, LOCs from us too, like the LC5i Pro, 2i Pro, that sort of thing. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Maybe we'll do one of those in the future if there's enough interest and requests. Otherwise, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you, Matt. Hi. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, brother.